Hi, this is Maxim Verbist. In the tarot, the suit of sword represents the 14 steps of the development of the intellect. It is the path of truth. To start our exploration of the element Earth, the best way is to use a visualization. So I invite you to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Then start to imagine that you get lighter and lighter till you can levitate like a balloon and that the wind takes you up and makes you ascend. How does the room look like when you look from above? Then the wind brings you over the building and you see the different houses, the street and maybe the whole neighborhood. How does your place look like when you look to it from above? How does your life look like when you look to it with distance? Then you may climb even higher and embrace the entire earth globe. How does your life look like if you look it from the moon perspective? Now you have a sense of what do we mean by the element air. The ancients used to represent the power of the intellect by the element air, probably because from a birth side we see the world with a lot of distance. And that's exactly what the intellect allows us to do, to see things with detachment. And the tarot use the symbol of the sword because it is another function of the intellect. It is to cut and to try to analyze the world. Analyze means to divide the world into small pieces that we can understand and grasp better. So the intellect is much more than a tool to get smarter at getting what we want. It is a capacity to see the world. The Ace of Swords represent truth. Before we were able to think logically, before we were able to speak, even before our ancestors were capable to utter the first word, truth was already existing, immutable. And of course nowadays, a lot of thinkers believe that there is nothing such as truth, capital T. But actually, truth is the condition of existence of any sound thinking. Remove truth and everything we may believe to understand about the world, any world would lose its meaning. So truth may be a myth, but we need to go towards truth, even if we'll probably never reach it. The Two of Swords represents duality. Any logical thinking requires we juggle with pairs of opposites. Before thinking, we have to separate what is above that to what is below the left for the right, the male for the female, the good from the bad. And it is only to that condition 
that any thinking is possible. That's exactly why the tarot use a sword to represent the intellect, because the intellect is that machine that only works if we divide reality. And obviously, there is a problem with that. If we really believe that one side have more existence than the other side, we fall into the attitude we call dualism, thinking that one side would exist without the other, which is utterly wrong. The Three of Swords represent the cognitions. We human beings spend our entire time to observe the environment and to try to transform what we have observed into knowledge for a better adaptation. For instance, if we remark that the snow is cold, well, it will help us to think about a pair of gloves when the next time it is snowing. And this is how we keep learning about the world. But obviously, sometimes we create wrong knowledge. And thank goodness we have an incredible capacity to be aware of the mistake we make, but it doesn't work all the time. And sometimes we keep our mistakes as they would be truth, and that is where they get dangerous. The Four of Sword represents logic. Every sentence we utter, every sound reasoning we do, follow a set of rules we call logic. And at first, children are unaware of them. But progressively, and especially from the age of 7 to the age of 14, they start to understand consciously those rules and apply them to establish a sound judgment. And the power of logic makes all thinking straight and right. But it can also trap us into a very squared vision of life, because life is always bigger than what our intellect can grasp. The Five of Swords represent the opinion. Around the age of 10, the child knows enough the rules of logic and the capacity to articulate them in a coherent language to defend what we call an opinion. An opinion is a vision of the world that we are capable to defend verbally. And obviously, an opinion is subject to many criticism. It is just one vision of the world articulated in the form of speech. The Six of Swords represent the context. Around the age of 14, the teenager starts to be able to understand that every opinion depends upon the context of the person who produced that opinion. And at that moment, it is an entire universe of multiple possibilities of opinion that gets open to him because every context will generate a different opinion, so the amount of opinions are illimited. The downside of that understanding is that there are so many possibilities that it gets impossible to take our choice among those many possible opinions. The Seven of Swords represent capacity of discernment. Our mental is not only there to help us to calculate things better. It is mostly a tool we have to take sound and complex decisions. And it is typical of the adult thinking to be able to Interwine different levels of complexity, different interests, and still being able to take a decision, and that is the power of discernment. The Eight of Swords represent the paradigm. 
It is usually an understanding we gain through higher education, but every theory is the product of its epoch. Every generation will have a certain limitation in the point of view, and they will be able to think till a certain point, but not beyond, because it requires to the collective intelligence to evolve, to acquire really breakthroughs and new ideas. And every generation gives place to new ideas that were not conceivable before. It depends on the paradigm. The Nine of Swords represent not knowing. It is the hallmark of the brightest mind to realize what they don't know. Because very, very educated people know a lot of things about their domain of specialization. But above all, what they know is all the flows of the knowledge. And that is the driving engine of the progress. When we are deeply aware of what we don't know, there is space to conceive a new thinking form that has never been identified before. The Ten of Swords represents separatedness. The intellect is a device of the mind that splits the reality into many, many small pieces that we can articulate logically. And it helps us tremendously to solve a lot of logical problems. But the main problem of the intellect is that it is always rendering a divided vision of the world. And the world is not separated, it's just the mind that makes her think that it is separated. And then when we meet that limitation of the intellect, the mind becomes a real prison because it prevents us from seeing the reality as it is. The Page of Sword is the purest representative of the element air. And as you can see, he doesn't really use the sword he's having. He's just holding it and his interest is the pure curiosity to understand how the world, world works. He has no other objective than just to know. The Knight of Sword associates the element air with the fire. So he's not only extremely keen to acquire new knowledge, but he will fight for his opinion. And he's a little bit a fundamentalist because he believes that the sword he holds gets him access to truth. The king of sword blends the element air with the stability of the element earth. So the powers of his thinking allows him to go into the thick of the concrete decision. That is how, at its best, it can become like the King Arthur, a very capable king able to take very important decisions due to the depth of his understanding. And obviously, it can also turn into a caricature of the French style intellectual who is much more interested to demonstrate his intelligence than any practicality. The Queen of Swords blends the element air with the element water. That means that in her thinking she is capable to integrate the element of emotions and therefore to access to the highest form of thought that we call an intuition, which blends clear logical thinking with deep emotions. Therefore, 
the Queen of Swords is the true master of the element air. And she's its higher achievement. She can teach us how to make a better use of our mind. We have now covered the 14 steps of the path of truth. And if you are interested to get your intellect sharper and above all to access to the intuitive level of thinking, which by the way is possible at any stage of the development, you will need something else than books and education. You will need to come to terms with the element air. And for that purpose, you may keep in your bedside table the picture of the Queen of Swath, or start to go into nature and develop friendships with the birds and the air in general. In the past, whenever a very important decision have to be taken in ancient Rome, people used to delimit a space of the sky and just wait that the bird will bring them the proper intuition. And it may sound like superstition, but it was the base upon what our entire civilization has been built.